Ms. Jamie is going to uh, be, be sharing a, a quick PowerPoint slide uh, about a, a pilgrimage that uh, our young adult group made to Canton, Ohio, to the house of uh, Rhoda Wise. She's a servant of God. I don't know if you knew this, but we have a servant of God within like an hour and a half drive from here. Uh, she lived in the 1940s. Uh, or she passed away in the 1940s sometime. Uh, but all these wonderful miracles that are attributed to her is really fascinating story. So she's going to really quickly tell us about uh, who she, Rhoda Wise is as a servant of God and also our experience, our, our little pilgrimage there. But okay, it's been uh, since I was in college, since I did a PowerPoint presentation. So Father assures me I will be all right. Um, so uh, Rhoda Wise uh, was a, a stigmatist and a mystic um, from Canton, Ohio. See, I'm already not okay. Okay. Um, so between 1939 and her death in 1948, uh, she kept a diary and she kept reporting regular visions um, of Jesus Christ and St. Therese of Lisieux in her Canton home. Um, she was actually raised Protestant. Her family was very uh, anti-Catholic. Um, and she had been associated with a number of sudden and unexplained healings, including the healing of um, Mother Angelica, and uh, who back then was uh, Rita Rizzo. Um, she was, uh, in 2016, Bishop George Murray of the Diocese of Youngstown declared um, Rhoda a servant of God uh, as a first step towards her possible canonization as a saint of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, so she was born Rhoda Greer in uh, 1888 in Ohio to her first husband, Eli Greer. Um, and that she was one of eight children. Um, grew up poor. Uh, her family moved to Wheeling, West Virginia, where, uh, as I mentioned, she was raised Protestant. Um, and in 1915, she uh, married her, her first husband. Um, but it, six months into her marriage, uh, he suddenly died. Um, six months later, she married George Wise, uh, and the couple continued to live in the Canton area. Um, despite their best efforts, uh, they were unable to have children, so they adopted two daughters, um, one who died in infancy and the other one, um, Anna Marie, Anna May, I'm sorry. Um, her husband was an alcoholic, changed jobs frequently, um, resulting in financial hardship, embarrassment for the family. Um, they lived at seven different addresses, and by the early 1930s, they were living in a very small depression shack that uh, pretty much consisted of, of three small rooms uh, near the Canton City dump. And just when she thought things couldn't get any worse, um, Rhoda Wise finally told her husband that she was pregnant. Um, overjoyed, she began knitting clothes for the baby, singing to it, speaking to it only to find that it was actually a 39 pound ovarian cyst. Though heartbreaking, the cyst was removed and uh, Rhoda did heal nicely. But in 1936, um, she suffered a broken foot that failed to heal properly uh, and went through a lot of pain, difficulty walking. Um, she was hospitalized frequently and underwent a number of operations for both her um, later to find abdominal issues uh, and foot problems. So many so that her uh, cast had to be changed every few months uh, in order to try and correct her foot from turning inward. So during a stay at the Canton Hospital, operated by the Sisters of Charity, um, she befriended some of the sisters who taught her to pray the rosary and told her about St. Therese of Lisieux. And she began to pray regularly to St. Therese and also became very devoted to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And in 1938, she decided to convert to Catholicism and was received into the Catholic Church. Um, but she was unfortunately diagnosed with an incurable stomach disease, um, possibly cancer. This was uh, a result from, uh, she was in the hospital for uh, the injury to her foot, but it was found uh, that the old incision from that cyst, um, something had uh, started to rupture underneath. Um, 
she was discharged from the hospital, um, basically telling her that she was incurable. Um, they had had so many surgeries that the, um, there was no more skin left to cover the wound. And she was sent home with a protruding bowel, um, just prepared to die. Um, according to why she experienced an apparition of Jesus Christ on uh, May 28th, 1939 at her home, during which Jesus told her that he would come again with St. Therese in 30 days on that following month of June 28th. And her diary read, at 2.45 a.m. On, on the 20th day of May 1939, our blessed Lord appeared to me as I lay awake in bed at my home. The room, which had been dark, suddenly became bright. And when I turned, I saw the marks of his forehead where the thorns had pierced his brow. He was gloriously beautiful and was robed in a gold garment which reflected every color. My first thought was that my time had come and I said to him, have you come for me? His answer was, no, your time has not yet come. He then declared that he would return in 30 days. As I reached out to touch his resplendent garment, he disappeared. Wise reported that Jesus and St. Therese both appeared on June 28th, exactly 30 days later, and during their visit, uh, cured Wise of her stomach injury. Her diary again states, the little flower approached my bed and motioned to me to remove the coverlet and the dressing from my wound. She then placed her hand on my abdomen and said, I am the little flower. You have been tried in the fire and not found wanting. Faith cures all things. She would not permit me to replace the dressing, but returned to our Lord's side. And Jesus said, I will come again. There is work yet to be done. And they vanished. Immediately I fell asleep. And when I woke at 5 a.m., I was astounded to find that the wound on my abdomen was entirely closed. All the rawness which extended over the entire abdomen was also completely gone and replaced with healthy tan colored skin. So as I had mentioned before, um, she had was also, while all this was going on, she hadn't been able to walk for uh, over two years um, with this cast on her leg that was being changed every several months. Um, in August of that same year, 1939, St. Therese, Therese miraculously healed her foot. Her diary read, at 2.45 on August 15, 1939, as I sat up in bed crying with the pain caused by the tight-fitting cast, the room suddenly lighted up again, and the little flower stood by my bed and said, that is a very little thing. Stand up and walk. I placed my feet on the floor and stood up. And as I did so, the cast, over a foot long, split open from top to bottom, and I easily stepped out of it. The little flower then said, go to church now, and immediately disappeared. I then heard mass for the first time in my life. It was the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I've been walking without difficulty ever since. So from 1938 to 1948, Wise said that she experienced regular apparitions of Jesus and St. Therese, including a visit by St. Therese on January 2nd, the saint's birthday, every year. Rhoda also suffered, um, oops, I'm out of order here, sorry. So um, St. Therese uh, one night also appeared to her and sprinkled rose petals on her and told her to have them photographed. And when she did, she found images of Jesus, St. Therese and other holy figures. So if you look closely here, you can see this is an actual um, rock that we were able to, or in a glass enclosure that we were able to hold there um, at Rhoda's home. Uh, and you can see um, it appears to be St. Therese on that actual rose petal. On Good Friday in 1942 um, was the first time that Rhoda suffered stigmata on her forehead and continued to um, bleed at intervals over the next two years. Uh, in the next year, her, uh, it appeared on her hands and feet as well as her forehead. 
and the bleeding stigmata were witnessed by many visitors to her home. And in her final apparition of Jesus, uh, just 10 days before her death, Wise said that Jesus asked her to pray the rosary and tell people to pray every day for the conversion of Russia. Um, many people came and visited Rhoda. Uh, large crowds also gathered outside the Wise home on nights um, when she was expecting an apparition. And many people credited Wise with miraculous cures after they visited her home or received holy water from her home. And she developed a reputation as a miracle worker. Um, so in, uh, even after that, in 1943, um, Rita Rizzo, who was later known as uh, Mother Angelica, uh, came to Rhoda Wise's home with a um, bad stomach disorder. Uh, she couldn't eat without getting sick. Um, I don't know what the proper terminology from that time was, but it was something about a twisted stomach. And um, Rhoda Wise uh, gave her one of these um, blessed medals of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and told her to pray uh, the novena to uh, St. Therese. And after the nine day novena, um, her stomach issue was uh, completely healed. So this is the jug of water that contains the water that our Lord blessed uh, when Rhoda was alive. He told her to give the water to the sick and the priest told her to pour out a third of it and refill the rest with tap water and give it away. And it, it would never lose its blessing. Um, and they still do that today. So in 1960, uh, 12 years after Rhoda died when her daughter, Anna Marie, Anna May, um, sorry, was at the Wise home with her family. Her children were young and it was really hard for her to keep the doors open uh, of this home. And she was thinking about closing them. And one day her and a friend of hers were filling these little bottles of water, getting ready to uh, hand it out to a busload of people who were coming. And she was grumbling about it and wasn't really happy. And the friend could see that she was really frustrated. And she said, Anna Mae, pass me that jug and I'm gonna fill it up for you. And when Anna Mae went to hand it to her, they both saw a flash. And the next thing they saw was a host falling through the water. And they called the priest, um, that was nearby, Monsignor Havig, and he didn't know what to make of it. And he said, well, let's just wait. And it's been 61 years and the host is uh, still in that jug. And we saw it that day. Um, so in uh, November, 2012, the investigations began into her possible canonization. Um, that she might move forward from sainthood in the Roman Catholic Church. Um, in 2016, um, Bishop Murray of the Diocese of Youngstown declared Wise a servant of God, which is the first step uh, on the path to sainthood. And a formal diocesan inquiry was launched to determine uh, whether or not she may be beatified and ultimately canonized as a saint. Um, in July of 2018, uh, the results of the diocesan investigation were submitted to the Vatican, and uh, I believe, where's Father Canise? Correct me if I'm wrong. Are they still investigating? So they're still, um, and the, the house is still there, obviously. We, we went to this pilgrimage uh, not too long ago. Um, if you have a chance, it's right in Canton, Ohio. It's not too far. It's uh, definitely doable in a day. Uh, it's a beautiful place to visit. So uh, there's our group in front of the grotto uh, that Jesus also asked uh, that was built. This is a very, very super condensed version of everything that we saw that day. It was a really incredible trip. So trying to um, squish this all into 10 minutes uh, was really difficult. Um, but that uh, in the uh, upper left-hand corner here is a picture inside the grotto. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, uh, is a picture of uh, Jesus. One day he appeared to her, um, actually disguised as a soldier. As a soldier appeared to her and said, told her to draw a picture of Jesus. And she said, I can't, I can't draw a picture of the face of the moon. And he said, when I return, it will be done. And she looked up and it was the face of, of Jesus. And then he vanished and she ended up sketching this out 
Um, and then the, the last picture that you see, um, the chair that that gentleman is sitting in is the chair that Jesus would sit in uh, whenever he would come to visit her. And they painted it gold to make sure that nobody mistook that chair for uh, any other chair. Um, so this house is now, I believe, um, it was given to Mother Angelica and I think the Sisters of Charity, um, but it's a nonprofit organization now. And actually, um, the reason why I waited to do the door prizes is because we actually have some of the holy water that was blessed by Jesus um, as some of our, our door prizes. So I was kind of excited to, to get those out to you. Um, I don't know that I could answer really any questions, but um, it was a really great pilgrimage. And because the young adult group kind of um, puts these formations together, I wanted to just give you a little update about um, the things that we're doing and um, how much of a great trip it was. And if you do have a chance to get out there, they do tours um, and it was a really beautiful experience. Um, so thank you.